All right, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. Everybody's trying to identify that next Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes breakout at the quarterback position. We're talking through our top 10 quarterbacks today. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell. We've got a great show for you. Foot Clan, your fantasy drafts are fast approaching, which means you need the ultimate draft kit. We've got all of our research, all of our uh, blood, sweat, and tears of this past offseason poured into the ultimate draft kit. We're talking sleepers, breakouts, busts, values. We've got uh, all the coaching changes, all the rookies broken down, letting you know who you need to draft. We've got a lot of pretty cool tools in there as well. The consistency charts, see how a player has performed week to week. Mix a high ceiling player with somebody maybe that gives you that week to week Robert Wood style stuff. You can check out all the neat features of the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> Was that a howl? Oh, <laughs> no. Everybody. Guys. Yeah. This is going to be a good one. I'm just not awake yet. Oh, yeah, we are. Would you like my coffee? I've had some coffee. It, it doesn't take. It hasn't taken. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. I guess I could tie the howl into... Uh, the NHL playoffs and mm. the Arizona Coyotes, and but you wouldn't want me to do that because you are uh, you're not a sports fan. You're a football fan. Yeah, you're looking right at me while you're saying that. And actually, I checked in on the Coyotes' score last night, and I was disappointed. Oh, did we lose? Yeah, we did. And and the, oh no, it was really my fault because I followed the entire game, got myself some dinner. It was zero zero with six minutes left in the game. Spoiler, we didn't score again. <laughs> I sit down to eat my dinner, and they the, the Avalanche scored three times in like a minute. It was three nothing. It was like I, I hadn't even finished a bite, and I was like, well, it, it is a waste of time. Do totally they, your fault. Do they just stop the game after that? Like nah. They really should have. I mean, there was nothing. You no, got us. It's just one game, Mike. It's just one game. And we're not going to talk about the NHL anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the first time in the hit. What is this? Episode 1000 something? That might be the first time we've ever brought up NHL on this podcast. It's 919, Jason. Oh, we're not to 1,000. No, we're not there yet. We have quarterback rankings on today's episode, so that'll be fun. I'm going to walk through our top 10 quarterbacks. And I have a quick question. I feel like this one would apply daily with the way camp is transpiring and, and breaking down depth charts and looking at players and teams. Name a player that you've been changing your opinion on lately. So somebody that you have just, uh, was it on yesterday's, maybe it was the footcast yesterday, I talked about how, or at the very end of the episode, Cortland Sutton, just kind of mm -hmm. starting to wondering if, I'm a, wondering if I'm a little too low on Cortland Sutton. That was an example on yesterday's show. For me, it's Lev Bell. Okay. Um, for whatever reason. In or out? In. Oh, in, in into my top ten. Oh, oh, the spicy at ten, but it doesn't take much. We have to remember, like the Lev Bell experience last year was so melancholy. It was so he finished tenth or eleventh every week. It was just it was trudging along two yards a carry, and we have to remember it doesn't take a whole lot when you're receiving back to get inside the top ten. I have him projected for just over a th like a thousand yards rushing 500 yards receiving that gets in into my top 10 with sure. with seven touchdowns total between rushing and receiving so i just think there are so few true workhorse backs he's one of them the offensive line the quarterback situation as bad as it could get last year yet lev still was okay I'm I'm feeling positive towards Lev Bell. I do understand what you're saying. I, I, I totally get that. I don't feel the same way. In fact, yesterday, uh, Adam Gase came out and said a bunch of really good things 
you know, that that were what did he say? The, the the headlines were, you know, I'm going to use Lev Bell much more uh, effectively. Uh, you know, Lev Bell's in great shape. He slimmed. Yeah, down. that was another piece. He's he's lost a little bit of weight. But it's one of those things where when I watch that speech, that that uh, conversation that Adam Gase was having, I I'm like, wait a minute. He's talking about how he used him incorrectly, tried to force him the ball in the beginning of last year, and he's tw he said he's 28 now. We got to make sure he plays all 16, and I'm gonna use him more effectively. To me, this says less volume, left, right, and center. Now, I agree with you. He's still a work workhorse back. He's still going to get the vast majority of volume, but I, I that made concerns for me. I almost moved him down, but I think I've I've got him at a spot that I actually like him. I, I still have him having about twenty fewer carries than last season. Uh but so I'm 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 neutral. Leave it to Adam Gase to say we gotta spell our twenty eight year old with a man who could file for AARP retirement right now. We gotta spell him with Frank Gore. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? Uh here's this, this freaking guy, man. The player that he's got him. quite the beard now, too. Oh, does Frank he's Gore? No, no. Oh, dude. Oh, I was like, that'd be... Adam Gaze. Oh, man. Does I don't it? want to see Adam Gaze's beard. I want to see Frank Gore's beard. Yeah. It'd be awesome. It'd be Ad a Adam cool Gaze beard. Is, is, uh, he's in disguise. <laughs> he's I taking, he's taking a vacation from himself. Who have you been changing on, Jason? Uh, I've been changing on Todd Gurley, and this started... Uh, this started on the Fire and Ice episode, Mike. Oh, my bad. Yes, it was. It was due to you bringing up the total routes run and realizing that it wasn't. You know, there's a lot being made right now of you know last year the Rams did not throw to the running back. They were you know lowest in the league at at, at the percentage of throws to the running back. But that insinuates that was by design, and it wasn't because the routes run were up near the top of the league. They had their running backs going out. They had Gurley going out to catch passes. He wasn't getting the ball, so you question, was it him? And now with the reports coming out of Atlanta that uh, early, you know, when they saw Todd Gurley, he was walking with a noticeable limp, that they're looking yeah. at maybe limiting his workload, and, and you question – is there something wrong? Was there last year with Gurley himself? Is it going to carry over? Are they going to limit his touches? My hope coming into the offseason was, look, this is a one-year deal for a coach that has to win or he is out. Give it to Gurley. Keep him on the field. I don't care about his health or even getting to 16 because I need to win the next game now. And that was kind of uh, my belief. And now I, I'm 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 second-guessing that and questioning Todd Gurley's ability so he's someone that I've certainly been cooling on yeah the, the thing with Todd Gurley is like okay when you're evaluating a fantasy player what can go right and weigh it against what can go wrong like if it goes right for Todd Gurley he's not Los Angeles Rams Todd Gurley he's the running back 12 he's like yeah 10. He's, he's like Freeman last year where it, Freeman still had a production you, you weren't really pleased with it for fantasy purposes so I'm yeah, I'm with you. I am out. Uh, I'm out on Todd Gurley. I, I, I haven't. It, it's hard to really locate someone for me who I'm really changing on. I'm still waiting for the, you know, more reports to come in. The the things that are kind of filtering out right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it. But Josh Jacobs is like 60 receptions now. Okay, that it's coming from the player. You know, we we always have to temper those things. <laughs> I, I like when a player is driving his own hype train. That's very fun. I'm driving. He's on, he's on board with me, though. Uh, <laughs> Co-piloting? Yeah. I told him to get the word out. I like it, When I'm changing, it's because I'm going back and forth in my head every single day. I, I have no idea what to do with Joe Mixon. Uh, talented running back. Like We saw it, and now you have uh, the coaching staff coming out saying, well, we see him as a volume running back. That means... We have to get him the ball more, and which is what they did in the second half of the season. They they found that the more he touches the ball, the better their team is. Then they're talking about, well, we got to get Joe Mixon more involved in the passing game, which that's when you take a running back and you you put the turbo boost on their fantasy production. But I don't quite trust the team. Uh, but And then you got a rookie quarterback. So when I'm changing, I'm, I'm literally going back and forth every single day on Joe Mixon, not knowing what to do. Uh, especially with his ADP, you know, you have to draft Joe Mixon, what, in the early second round 
or so to to get him, and then your then your opportunity cost is I'm taking Joe Mixon instead of taking Kenyon Drake instead of taking Miles Sanders. So that's where I am. It's it's not I I haven't been pushed a direction where I am going to stick yet, but I am just waffling. You're back waving in the wind. Yes. If I could go Jacobs Mixon. Because you can, right? I mean that yes. that works yes. out. Yes. If I if I'm drafting towards the back of the first round and I get to go I Jacobs it, Mixon, it would be a dream come true. I think it would be more likely f- to happen as Mixon Jacobs. I see Jacobs in the second more than more than Mixon, but uh, yeah, the, you could very easily walk away with that combination. Yeah, the Bengals are going to be one of the more interesting teams in football overall because I like their potential on offense, regardless of being. You know, uh, a young rookie quarterback and a younger head coach. I think this is. I mean, last year we experienced the transformation. Uh, ADP right now for Jacobs and Mixon's the same. <laughs> oh my, uh, one eleven. But you saw this in Arizona with Cliff Kingsbury and the offense starting to figure it out with a young quarterback over the course of the year, and it meant really good things for his value. And I think Joe Burrow's good, and I think getting AJ Green back makes any quarterback better. And Joe Mixon is just a – he's a a workhorse. I mean, he does get – if you watch the games last year, he does get better over the course of the game. Right. He just wears you down. And he runs uh, he, he runs harder in the third and fourth quarter, even when they were down. That was the crazy thing about the end of last year. Their season was over. They were in the, the running for the number one overall pick. And third and fourth quarter, Joe Mixon was playing as if it was the Super Bowl. That's one of the things I really like about him on the field. He just never takes the playoff compared to maybe, I don't know, Lev Bell. All right, Twitter. How dare you? <laughs> the guy that I'm like higher on now, uh, who you have ranked pretty pretty high too. Yeah. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow the show, the website is thefantasyfootballers.com. I encourage you to go check it out. We got player profiles up there now, the ultimate draft kits over there. If you are looking for a league to get into, uh, we've got a resource for you. If you go to footclanleagues.com, everybody that supports the show over at jointhefoot.com gets access to uh, local leagues. Um, you can find a dynasty league. You can find people that want to play fantasy football the way you do. Yeah. Not people that will play it and maybe show up in the draft or maybe uh, put the right lineup in there three out of nine weeks. Online leagues. I mean, you, your your personal league that you're used to having – Maybe they take a vote this year and they say uh, it's not happening. Go over to FootClanLeagues.com, get in a couple. Or or if you're recruiting, a couple spots for a, for a league where you lost somebody. So let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right. George Kittle. George Kittle got the bag. Congratulations, Mr. Kittle. Five-year, $75 million contract extension for... Star tight end George Kittle, reported by Ian Rappaport uh, this morning, and half of it's going to be guaranteed. He is the foundation of the offense. He is, uh, we were saying in the office yesterday, it's like, I've been ready to move George Kittle to the number one tight end spot for like a month and a half. Just not ready, but Kelsey, you know, Kelsey four straight years, it's hard to take him, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo compared to Patrick Mahomes throwing you the football. Exactly. But Kittle is... He's a man. <laughs> oh, he is. It is insane, it, like just how foundational a tight end can be to a team. But I, like I've seen, you know, the the brass talk about George Kittle and people saying, "Well, okay, doing the the the, the mental experiment. If you had to start over, everyone's available in the draft. Like, where's George Kittle going?" And people are like, "Oh, he's a second round pick. He might even be a first round pick." You're like. That's wild, man. He's a tight end, but he, he is that important to the team. He's a great blocker. Yep. He's a great receiver. He's only 26 years old. He's a great so. locker room guy, too. Absolutely. And he can cut down trees. Without an axe, too. Without an axe. He just, yeah. Kill! Uh, well, I'll, let's transition to another very important tight end. Uh, Seahawks, t- I am bewildered. I am amazed, and I'm starting to believe. No. Seahawks tight end Will Disley practiced Wednesday Look. 10 yes, months sir yeah. what? 10 months after tearing his Achilles Pete Carroll expects him to be ready for week one 
what is happening? Like, what do they have in Montana that they don't have in the rest of the world? Montana strong, a work ethic, Mike. <laughs> it is. I, and here's the thing. Here's it, There's reason to believe it, that he's okay. And it's because he's come back from a horrible injury already right. and been uh, a, a fantasy factor. Now, last year, I know Disley was good, but you are still looking at a sample size of 23 receptions for the season. So temper your expectations, but he is statted for me. And uh, him and Greg Olson will share the work. And he is he is pushing Frank Gore for this infinite all category. So you are at uh, 24. <laughs> I, I saw a very funny tweet. I can't remember who put it out, but it's like, uh, Will Disley is what happens when you combine Wolverine with Mr. Glass. Right. And I was he like, breaks, That's, but he heals. Yeah, it, it was a pretty funny tweet. So, Andy, have you – you statted him. I did. But does that mean you have purchased the tickets? Have you booked the vacation? To Disneyland? Are you going to Disneyland? <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. No, I have Greg Olson statted for more reception. Because I feel like Jason's had the reservation booked for like – over a year. Well, well yeah, but then for a belief. while I thought I had to cancel it, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> I waffled, and now, now I'm I'm gonna say it's not the safest place on earth. No, it's not the safest place no. on earth, but it's a it's a good time. I mean, look, if if he ends up the starting tight end, <sighs> which I do think is in the realm of possibility, it would be so wild. But I I I think we can all agree that whoever the primary tight end is there, yeah, I'm for interested. Russell Wilson is going to be utilized and fantasy relevant. There'll be more than one. Could be. It won't just be one. Well, sure. That's why I said primary. Sure. And you think that's Will Disley week one? I think it could be. Okay. I have Greg Olson statted that way. They still have Hollister on the depth chart too, but I'm impressed. Way to go, Will. And that, that's just awesome. Yes. Just to, to get back. I mean, tearing your Achilles after you tore your patella? Yikes. Stay healthy, my friend. Yeah. Uh, Frank Reich, some hype train, says Marlon Mack has earned the right to be the starting running back, uh, but that they're going to ride the hot hand. Marlon Mack is a seventh-round pick right now, the 33rd running back off the board. I've seen him go later than that. Oh, yeah. Many, many times. That is, I've seen him go eighth, ninth round. Uh, And then Jonathan Taylor right now is in the fourth round, and I've seen him go in the third. So... If this gap is only three rounds, I'm probably taking Jonathan Taylor in the fourth round. That's what that's what I wanted to, to focus yeah. on. Is if 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 it's really, you know, Mac is early seventh and Taylor is early fourth, I'm taking Jonathan Taylor. Yes. But but if you uh you know you swap the rounds out, one goes earlier, one goes later, then uh, okay, maybe I'll take a chance that Mac is the guy. But I look the hot hand, Taylor's hands are magma. They're just they're hot all the time. The offensive line is great, and Taylor's the future. So it's not yes. going to take much to give him a lot of work. And if he's setting the precedent now that he's willing to ride the hot hand, you know, Marlon Mack is going to have games. He's a great running back. He's also completely free if you want to acquire him in a dynasty league. And I have no idea whether you should or not because I, he's just like the free man. gift at the end of a, a purchase. They're just. Do you get three weeks of Marlon Mack? What's that worth in a dynasty league? Do you get five weeks? Marlon Mack is 24. I know. He is and he's, he's in his contract here, correct? Yeah, he is. They didn't give him an extension. Uh, yep. un- unfortunately, he has the free agent of Doom class coming up where there are just a ton a ton of running backs who uh are going to be taking each other's money. Yeah, he'll he will get a backup job next year, but he's a good enough <laughs> running back to where his talent mixed with uh you know the position says that in the future if you're talking dynasty league he could very well find his way into a starting job again due to injury do, do you, want, you guys want to help me out uh perfect timing i received a text message right now offering me marlon mack no you oh did. no you i did not, not. I, I did just now was it from one of the producers listening no no it was not it was from our dynasty league that seems impossible i just brought up marlon mack and i got a trade offer right now all right let's hear it um and this is, I need help evaluating this. I have some uh, dynasty bench young wide, wide receivers. Um, Anthony Miller, would you trade Anthony Miller away to get Marlon Mack in a dynasty league? No. I would not. Okay, McCall Hardman, would you trade McCall no, Hardman away no to way. get Marlon Mack in a no dynasty league? No way. All right, and the last one's Deontay Johnson, and of course, I'm not, no. of course I'm not doing that. What was the offer? Those were the offers. It was just any, any of those, of those guys. Oh, any, any of those, of those three. three. 
Cause it's so so they came to you and was like, if I give you a dollar, will you give me ten dollars? I yeah, and I don't want to. But I it think, can be in quarters. Yeah, it could be in one dollar bills like, or a ten dollar bill. You you pick how you want to give me ten dollars, but I'm still going to give you one dollar times more. <laughs> so, but you just it's ironic though because you just made the point. Marlon Max twenty four right now behind a great offensive line. We'll have another contract, but somebody like Anthony Miller is... But, but a backup contract. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, don't feel like Anthony Miller is giving $10 for $1. No, I agree. I thought you were too high when you said $10. Oh, Deontay, like I Deontay might, might be $10. But the you know the the reality is some of it is team dependent. If you've got just... If you're locked and loaded with four stud wide receivers and you're hoping one of those guys cracks your roster and you're in desperate need of running back... Then you should go make a different trade. Right. Go find a different running back. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, don't buy Marlon Mack is our... Yeah, and uh, then in uh, we got to get on to the quarterback rankings here, but the NFL uh, are, is reporting a positivity rate uh, around less than 1%. Said it in the studio yesterday, there are 18 teams that have not had one positive test. I, I did watch the so, Hard Knocks so last far, night, so good. Oh, which is also known as a one-hour tour of COVID protocols. Yes, <laughs> that's what I said. Uh, but... Uh, you know, I, I walked away from it with a couple of different thoughts. One, I walked away from it thinking every team is kind of doing things a little bit different. That was one thing. You know, every team is kind of finding their way. And there were a number of people that were like, okay, we kind of don't know how to do everything right. The, the masks on the field sometimes, sometimes on their chins on the field. They, you know, but they're all tested before they go in. So I thought it was, you know, there, it, it's kind of indicative of the COVID universe right now where everybody's doing what they think is the best thing to do, but nobody knows for sure that that's sure. the best thing to do. Yeah. Um, but also that they are just, they're spending the money, they're taking the time, they're making the investment on the uh, kind of... Safety. Yeah, safety and just the camaraderie of, look, we are all interdependent. That's the thing with COVID. I can't make just an individual decision. I would love to do that. And I'd love to tell you, you can go make yours, but your decision affects your the player playing next to you. Yep. And it seems like as you know, NFL is a a league where you know it's your team is just a brotherhood, and it's like that might protect these teams. You know, you have to hopefully. You know, that I'm optimistic. The testing has been good, and they're going to continue daily testing until further notice. I think we're going to get through camp. Hopefully, we can get through a full season. That's our expectation, Jason. Mm -hmm. I saw you on Twitter yesterday. That's your expectation as well. I, I I think that the season starts on time, plays 16 games, finishes on time. That's my genuine belief. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I think that there's been enough in place and these teams will fight through the problems. And, uh, and if you did not hear, the Buffalo Bills, Sean McDermott, head coach, they gave him a four-year extension, so he is not going anywhere. He's done a pretty solid job. Was it a four-year? Oh, because it, it, it was a six-year, but does he got like two more on it? I believe, that that's, what it is? I okay. believe that's what it is. Before, I, I love him. Before, I think he's a great coach. Uh, he's turned that defense around Yeah, big time. But before we get into the top 10 quarterback rankings, I want to thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction. Ladies and gentlemen, Fantasy Week kicks off today. The other's auctions dedicated to active fantasy football stars. All kinds of items. Bidding starts at just 20 bucks. No reserve. This is a week long uh, promotion. This is a, a very specially crafted thing for fantasy players. Uh, it, Pristine Auction is its a good time, man. It's, log on. See what's available. Are you a collector like me? Then you're just you're going to geek out seeing what is possible, and you will freak out when you see the prices that you can get this, this type of collector merchandise for. Like uh, all of these things which were uh, won on auction recently. Assigned Kenny Galladay jersey, Ooh, Kenny G. fifty four dollars. Wow! To wow. get a sign, like we have a Kyler Murray signed I can't jersey. Can't even up. hit the button. It's that. <laughs> it's that cheap. It's too hot. Look, a Debo Samuel signed mini helmet, eighty three dollars. A Miles Sanders signed Ooh, nice. uh, alternate speed mini helmet, eighty three dollars as well. Go check it out. It's completely free to sign up. Make sure you use the registration code Ballers because you're going to get a ten dollar credit for your first purchase. Some of the pricing is is good enough to where you control your league mates with a purchase. Like you can buy something just to make someone else feel bad. Yeah. Like if sure. I if I beat you, like for instance, like if I bought a Joy Bell jersey, would that remind you of anything of the days gone by, Jason? I don't want to talk about that. At least you went distant <laughs> past and not P River. 
<laughs> that one would hurt more. I will uh, have to take a look see at some P River merchandise. So, what code do they use, Mike? The code is Ballers. Ballers. I've heard of that. Yeah, at pristineauction.com. All right, quarterback time. Quarterbacks. All right, top 10 quarterback rankings show. We are looking at our consensus rankings in six point per passing touchdown format. Lamar Jackson comes in at number one. Wait, no, you said six point, so he can't come in number one. He's a rushing quarterback. He comes in at number one, Jason. What? Yeah. yeah. He's pretty good. He's so good. He's very good. Uh, that's because he threw 36 passing touchdowns. But so that's going to come down. 36 times six. That's going to come down. I know that Pat Mahomes would be the number one quarterback because he throws so many touchdowns. He ran for 1,200 yards, Jason. That's so good. 176 carries for 1,200 yards. In that's... other words, he ran for, what, 300 more yards than Lev Bell on, like, <laughs> 80 is, fewer carries. Yeah, it's pretty in, insane. Uh, seven rushing touchdowns, which means he had a total of 43 touchdowns he was responsible for last year. Uh, a pillar of consistency. He had a horrible week five where he finished 17th of the pos position. Otherwise, every single week he finished inside the top 12 and all but three of those inside the top six. <laughs> I mean, it. this is kind of the uh, antidote to a late round quarterback philosophy if this is what you can guarantee. If you can get this from like we talk about late round quarterbacks because they're replaceable. If you could get a certified guarantee that this is the kind of production you would get from a quarterback, that's not replaceable. That's not replaceable what, at all. Not even close. What Lamar Jackson did last year is not replaceable. And all the tongue and cheek stuff about Pat Mahomes, the reason I say that is because I went into this offseason very confident Mahomes would be my number one. Uh, I nerfed the touchdown rate from Lamar Jackson. I believe that the Kansas City Chiefs offense is going to have a phenomenal year. Uh, you know, I've got Pat Mahomes back up to 40 touchdowns. Not many times has that been done before. And when I looked at my rankings at the end and saw that, oh, Lamar Jackson is still number one. The rushing baseline is pure outlandishness. It is, I mean, he he's he's broken pretty much every record that that existed. The only other quarterback, you know, since 2000 to rush for 1,000 yards was Michael Vick, and he just barely beat it. Lamar Jackson had 1,213 yards, and he didn't play 16 games. Yeah. And to give you context on why he's still number one, even if he has a regression, which he will because they all do when they have seasons like this, um, his fantasy point production last year was, you know, 70 points over somebody like Dak Prescott. So if it comes down, it's still – Number one by a wide margin. Yeah, it, that's it, it, the reason why Lamar Jackson is not a second round pick for me. It, I'm not calling for a Which regression. Which is where he's going right now. I'm I'm not calling for regression on the rushing. I think Lamar Jackson's going to rush for over a thousand yards again. Yes. Maybe it's eleven hundred and not twelve hundred, but that's whatever. That's a that's a very small difference. The regression is in the passing touchdowns. Nine percent of his attempts turned into a touchdown. That number is astronomical. Reminder, the league average for players that uh, throw the ball or that have like 200 attempts, it's like 4.6. It fluctuates from like 4.5 to 4.7. So he, his the efficiency is going to come down. He still is my number one quarterback, but the thing is, if that efficiency does come down as historically it always does, then he's not the week-to-week -week difference maker that it would take for him to pay back the value of a second-round pick. It's tough with Lamar. I mean, we have him at one. He's actually being drafted behind Patrick Mahomes. What? Yeah, they're two picks apart, but they are being draft. he is being drafted behind I'm Patrick Mahomes. And if efficiency comes down, I don't think the consistency changes almost at all because of the rushing baseline. No, he'll still be a top-12 uh, quarterback on a weekly basis, but does he keep hitting that number one where, spot? Where do you draft him in a two-QB or a super-flex league? Superflex or two QB, I think he's in conversation from the first pick through about the sixth pick. I mean, he's going to be a first round guy for sure. Any worry about injury? Because when you rush the ball 176 times, 1,200 yards, 
I've seen some good uh, injury analysis done on the specificity of types of run, design versus scramble, the percentage of his runs, and it, it, it leads me to believe that he is not at any more high of an injury risk than most other quarterbacks the way that he's been running the ball. That That's not to say that, uh, I mean, any, any player can get injured, but I don't have the same worry that I had last year before reading that analysis that looked deep into the genuine context of not just Lamar Jackson, but historical uh, injury rates on on rushing attempts by quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes comes in at number two, and last year had the injury, uh, which was in the Denver game in week seven. If you look at the very small six-week sample size prior to that, he was on pace for 5,600 <laughs> passing yards <laughs> and 37 passing touchdowns. Now, when you're on pace for 5,600 passing yards, it is worth highlighting. I mean, he threw for 50 touchdowns the year before. His pace, even though he was literally ablaze, was only 37 passing touchdowns. That was the offseason narrative. We knew that the the passing touchdowns are going to come down because they've come down for everybody that's ever hit that mark. Uh, and they're you know they're just a, a variable that changes over time. But his career touchdown rate is 6.9 percent. Yes, he is. He is excellent. I, I honestly, I think the only thing to talk about with Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, single quarterback league. What round will you actually draft? Third round. Third round, Jason. Yeah, that's that's right where I am. I think I would consider it in the fourth, which sure. means that we probably I, will yeah. Have but st there's still people out there. Look, the game of uh, drafting late round quarterbacks. It's it's about getting value for a position where there's only. One started, generally, we're talking about single quarterback leagues, there's one started, so there's only 12 quarterbacks going, and you got to get, you got to extract the value. That doesn't mean you bury your head in the sand of of a quarterback who can be a difference maker in in the third for you guys and in the fourth for me. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where home leagues now, it's known that like, oh, you should right. draft it's, your it's quarterback more popular, late. Yeah. It's popular. You don't want to be the first one drafting a quarterback. You don't want to be the loser that's like, ah, yeah. early quarterback. It's, it's not a game of chicken. But the point is, is if that pushes your specific league to put those quarterbacks at a value, not at their average draft price that's you know the normal league, but if your league lets them drop, then then have the confidence in that third or fourth round to, to take them. But at you know in the second, it is certainly much more difficult to pay off when you are replacing – a stud running back, a stud wide receiver, and you're ripping them out of a position that you need, you know, collectively Multiple, between yeah. those two positions, at least six guys. Number three, come, uh, it's Dak Prescott. Comes in at number three. Number three for myself and Jason. Number four for Mike. Currently being drafted as the QB four in the sixth round. Is he the real best value considering the weapons that he has? The fact he finished number two overall last year obviously Mahomes had the injury but I mean he has been a machine four seasons four top 12 finishes at the quarterback position Cooper Lamb Gallup Zeke and I mean burying the lead here yes. Blake, Blake Jarwin thank you I um, appreciate that Mike McCarthy takes over Mike McCarthy has come out and said he's the one learning the most this offseason in other words the Kellen Moore system is staying put and he is trying to learn it that, I mean, that's great news. That is. For an offense, you know, you don't want Mike McCarthy to come into this great offense of last year and then be like, all right, guys, look at how I run things. You know, they had this most of the same players. No, he's the, searching for coattails. The same, yes, exactly. He's, But he's good at that. <laughs> yes. I mean, he has found yeah. a championship. Many running. years of <laughs> coat Aaron's <laughs> coattails. We're on to the next. Oh, Does that mean man. That, Whenever he goes to like a black tie, affair, he's he's in tails, right? Of course. Like he has the, the the jacket with full tail. Well, now I'm just imagining him on the sideline, you know, in a full penguin suit. Yes, <laughs> that's how he coaches now. Yeah, he's the penguin. <laughs> oh my uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a great comp. <laughs> Not a lot of ambition to be oh. compared to the Penguin. So here's where you start. You, Andy, you said, okay, so is he the best value, right? Six, well, he's a sixth-round pick. Sixth-round pick. He's our you know, consensus quarterback three. Was great last year. The Hat, offense is intact. He, he could, could be the number one. Could finish yes. as number one. Right. So 
Is he that value? And I think this is where you have to bring up, yes, he was the quarterback two last year. He was, you know, maybe the quarterback three in reality if Mahomes wasn't uh, sure. injured. But the gap on a per game basis between those top two guys and the next best is monumental. You look at the gap between Dak and the quarterback 12, and it isn't, it, it's not as big as you think. So I don't necessarily look here and say, okay, well, this is great. I, I only have to replace a sixth round running back or wide receiver. I don't think that he's a gimme in the sixth. If if he drops, I do like him. But there's so many quarterbacks that I think are are able to do, not necessarily the 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 odds aren't as high as Dak's, but there are a lot of quarterbacks later that are able to do what I think Dak could do this year. Interestingly, last year Dak had the most wide receiver drops in the NFL. Um, Ooh, really? He threw 30 touchdowns, almost 5,000 yards. He was great. He does not run the ball the way uh, you know Lamar Jackson, no, Kyler no. Murray, some of those players do. Kyler and Dak are going at the exact same spot in drafts, essentially. Do you find yourself – because when I asked the value question – is Kyler somebody that you're more willing to, to grab in the sixth round than Dak because of the rushing upside, because of the fact that Kyler, I mean, last year in his rookie season, over 500 rushing yards, he does have the ability to hit, go for five, six, 700 rushing yards in the right season, it's, which would raise the it's, ceiling. It's a great question to put those two next to each other because when you say Dak or Kyler, I lean towards Dak because I've seen it and it's he's safer but if you're drafting someone in at this point for them to really be worth it and help you win a championship, you need the breakout. And if you talk about ceiling between Dak and Kyler, Kyler's rushing yardage says that if the if the passing touchdowns or the passing volume comes, Dak wouldn't be able to keep up with Kyler because of the rushing capability. So maybe Kyler is the higher ceiling. Ky Kyler was the quarterback seven last year in a season in which he threw 20 touchdowns. Yeah, that's why it's... It, it, the answer for me is it's Kyler, QB7, and now you add DeAndre Hopkins into that. I, I focus on the fact that Kyler Murray, 3.7% of his attempts turn into a touchdown because if, if you were watching Arizona Cardinals games, you would see the offense moving fantastically, and then as soon as they get into the 20, into the red zone, things just sputter out and they have to kick a field goal yeah over and over and over. And now you now you add DeAndre Hopkins now you add a second year in the NFL for Kyler Murray that's why I would go with him as o over Dak okay and Kyler is four on our consensus list last year like I said 20 touchdowns 544 rushing yards four touchdowns on the ground DeAndre Hopkins arrives that is a big deal yes uh it, it is a an always open hall of fame caliber wide receiver that you add to an offense that was taking strides forward. Uh, Christian Kirk played hurt last year. He's back healthy. You have Larry Legend. And you have Kenyon Drake, a very capable pass-catching running back out of the backfield. This guy is the limit um, for Kyler. Yeah. Uh, what's the, you what's even the have floor? A guy that what you... can go wrong there in Arizona? Because Oh, a lot could go wrong. I mean, the, the, the blueprint for how it goes wrong is has been brought up. It's Baker Mayfield. Baker had a phenomenal rookie season. He adds Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, the the Browns were the hot team. I mean, uh, drafted high. Ba basically, Baker was expected to take that step forward, and instead, the offensive line got a little bit worse. Odell Beckham wasn't the same Odell Beckham we had seen, and instead of taking that year two leap forward, teams have film on Baker, and maybe he takes a, a year two step back. I mean, this is about Kyler Murray, not his pieces. This is about whether or not he is taking a step forward, getting better at his reads. You you look at last year, so many rookie idiocy moments where he's taking a 20-yard sack, you know, that he absolutely does not need to take. And sure. So, you know, the, there are ways it can go wrong. Kyler is nowhere near as safe as Dak. Kyler's floor is, you know, he, he sputters and falters, but... His ceiling is is monumental. Yeah, he did have some real terrible games last year. So, you know, even though the final numbers were good, he had back-to-back -back weeks in week seven and eight where you were like, oh, no, the wheels are falling off for Kyler, finishing at the basement fantasy-wise. And the end of the year wasn't good either. We hope DeAndre Hopkins helps him take that step forward. But now you get into the murky land of like, so Dak, he has these warts. 
these reasons why he might not be worth that sixth round pick. Kyler, yes, the upside's there, but it's far from a guarantee. Like you said, does he take the Carson Wentz, Lamar Jackson second year leap, or does he go the way of Baker Mayfield? For the record, we all assume he's taking a leap forward. Yes. Correct. And well, that is not, I mean, we are Arizona, you know, Cardinal fans, but that is not the rationale. We've been down on plenty of Cardinals plenty of times. The, the evidence says he should take a step forward because it's not just him. It's Cliff Kingsbury sure. came in and was a rookie in the NFL as a head coach and was figuring things out to completely change the offense after four weeks and trying to run his 10 personnel. So coming into year two, there's there's a lot of reason for optimism. Finished QB7 last year. Is QB5 is the ADP for Kyler Murray right now. All right. Uh, Russell. Russell Wilson. Guffel Wilson. Uh-oh. Russell Wilson at number five. It's been ringing a lot of guff my way on social media. Mr. Unlimited. Oof. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Un <laughs> un unlimited. Uh, yeah. We respect you, Russ, as a player uh, on the field. Uh, here's his fantasy finishes yeah. since he came off. In, into the league. 11, 8, 3, 3, 9, 1, 9, 4. Russell Wilson. Sounds like a telephone number. Was uh, up and down last year. We had the adventures with Russell Wilson. Couple weeks inside the top five, drops down to 18. Couple weeks inside, 18, 17. Number one overall, 14, 19, 16. You couldn't quite predict when they'd need Russell to be Mr. Unlimited and when they wouldn't. The, he, go the, ahead. The, the first 10 weeks of the year last year where he was, I mean, he, he was really good. He scored well and was a high end fantasy quarterback going into week 11, into their bye week. And yet you had five weeks where he was a top five quarterback, weak winning weeks. You had five weeks where he was not in the top 12. Uh, not in, he wasn't in the, oh, he wasn't I in the top 14. Yes. I mean, 14 was his best in the other five games. Yeah. So it was certainly, um, to your credit, Mike, you were down on Russ, and the consistency was not there. This was a team that wanted to run the ball. Right. And when they found success and didn't need Russell Wilson to do it. That's the irony. He's Mr. Limited. Yes. Mm. He by really his own is. offensive system and the, the kind of paradigm in Seattle. Do you guys want to play a game? Oh, oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I'm happy to hear. Oh, I, I, man. I don't mind. So this game, uh, shout out to Kyle the Borgogan. Yeah, uh, our editor. And he has a game for us that's over the last four years. And this game is called Russell Wilson. Oh, no. Or Andy Dalton. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Come my on. goodness. And this is four years. This is while Russell Wilson has been the quarterback four, quarterback nine, quarterback one, and quarterback nine. I Top can't 10, wait. All four. This is my favorite game of all time. All right. <laughs> Question number one. Russell Wilson or Andy Dalton completions per game. I'm gonna go Dalton. Yeah, Dalton. Higher passing. Okay, yeah, offense. more more volume. Yeah, we started off with a with a softball there. Okay. Yes, Andy Dalton just over 21. Russell Wilson just over 20. So I mean, very close. And I will say all of these numbers are in fact very close. 300 yard games. So those really big games that they get it done through the air. The last four seasons, Russell Wilson or Andy Dalton? That's got to be Andy. I'm going to go Andy. It is Andy Dalton who has 11 of them compared to 10 for Russell Wilson. Still, Mr. Uh, Limited. Still, That's still total very, very, games? Th yes. Total 300-yard games. Because I know Andy Dalton has missed games and Russell hasn't. It, no, these, these are total games over 300. Yeah, and the, and the games played is, in fact, 56 for Andy Dalton, 64 for Russell Wilson. So, so eight fewer games yet through wow. more 300 yes. games. Yeah. Let's go with passing yards per game. Russell Wilson or Andy Dalton? Well, based on the 300-yard games, I'm going to go with Andy Dalton. Well, let's hear it. Oh, it's Russell Wilson. Right. He still has Andy Dalton beat out on that one. Whew. But here comes the real humdinger. It's always nice to beat Andy Dalton at the, something. The grand finale. Fellas, the last four seasons, uh -oh. Russell Wilson or Andy Dalton, who has more rushing touchdowns? Oh, that's that's dirty. I mean, that's Mike. only there because Andy Dalton wins it. I mean, that's uh, yes, that's dirty. Okay, it's Andy Dalton. <laughs> it's Andy Dalton. 
Andy Dalton's the better <laughs> rush. That it's definitive. He's the better oh, rushing quarterback. You heard it here. Um, <laughs> you know. So what do you do? All all these all these fun games. Yes. Jokes aside, laughing about the inconsistency on a weekly basis, the supreme consistency on a career basis, and the the ceiling. Russell Wilson's ceiling is when when he gets there, it's very very it, vaulted. We we every year that goes by, that Russell Wilson doesn't get a chance to throw the ball as much as people want him to because his efficiency is always insane. I mean, 31 touchdowns, five interceptions last year. Uh, every year that goes by, it becomes compounded, the frustration from Seattle fans that want to see him do it or fantasy owners that want to see him be more consistent. I will never draft Russell Wilson in fantasy football. His price right now is the QB3. Yeah, he he's... deserves all the respect of being arguably the best quarterback in football. And I mean that. Like, he's arguably the best yeah. quarterback in football. He should be in the conversation. Um, yeah, and, you know, sure, Mahomes, maybe Lamar. But I, I would put Russell at two behind Mahomes. That's in how terms I would of, have it as well. And he's uh, being drafted, to you, what you're talking about, he's being drafted in front of Dak and Kyler Murray. It's just I'm but, not taking the chance with Russell right there. Yeah, because the the range of outcomes week to week is too vast for for the draft investment. Yeah, I agree. But uh, he do, can he finish as the quarterback one? Of course, yes. of course he could. And could he win you three or four weeks in a row? Yes, he will. I mean, if you have him and you start him every week, he will win you several weeks. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of the other ones when he lets you down. Yeah, and I mean he has weapons too. I mean DK Metcalf taking the step forward. Uh, Tyler Lockett is a phenomenal wide receiver who has a mind meld with Russell Wilson. And, you know, Philip Dorsett just moves in offense. <laughs> well, Philip Dorsett is perfect for this offense, right? Just have, I mean, you think Russ isn't going to hit a couple bombs to yeah. Philip Dorsett? Drew Brees at number six on our rankings, five for me, four for Jason, seven for Mike. Uh, he was outstanding to end the year after coming back from injury. This is one of the best teams in football when you have Michael Thomas available. Uh, at any moment, and then you add Emmanuel Sanders, I think you have a real stable baseline. And the price you pay for Drew Brees in fantasy leagues is, uh, well, his age is baked into it. I mean, he's the QB7 off the board. Uh, it's the back of the seventh round. I've drafted him later than that in many drafts. So Drew Brees kind of, you know, he doesn't give you that flash but he is going to throw probably 30 to 35 touchdowns in this offense, if not more. Drew Brees is – he's tough simply because we I – mean, he was locked in. He was a fantasy football legend, you know, for uh, – since 2011 where he was cruising along as a, the number one, number one, number two. Like, he was always a top six guy. Then the offense shifted the last couple years, and I'm talking about mm -hmm. 2017 and 18 – Heavy, heavy rush, uh, uh, rushing Kamara. attack, rushing touchdowns with Mark Ingram and Defense Alvin Defense got great. And now it, it changed a bit last year. So, you know, Drew Brees, his touchdown percent over the last three years was 5.4%. It went up to the highest touchdown percent of his career. So I am – this is just – I'm playing devil's advocate over here because I like Drew Brees. I like the – adding Emmanuel Sanders – to this to this roster makes the passing attack much better for Drew Brees. He ha I, I have my concerns though because he could go either way. You could go where he still finished as uh, a top twelve quarterback in 2017, but that was the year where I, if, if I'm trying to remember the stat off the top of my head, where he he pretty much was not a top twelve quarterback on a weekly basis, yeah. but still finished in the top twelve because he played all sixteen. He was consistent, and he was never he never had bust games. He was always just right. okay. He was it was an absolute floor play. So I he's I, never been in the top eight with Michael Thomas. Well, it, yes, I mean, he would have been within like the second half of last, last year, year, but yeah. he missed a bunch of time with the uh, when he the came, hand injury. When he came back in week eight, from that point on, yeah. he was the quarterback four. So he, you he I mean, burned it down. You saw it last year. He was he was phenomenal. So I'm not worried about the age. You add Emmanuel Sanders. This offense is great. The, what Mike is saying is it's just a matter of how do the touchdowns go in? Because the touchdowns are coming for the Saints. This is a team yes. with great continuity and a year of crazy change. I love the Saints. I love the Saints offense. I want Kamara. I want Breeze. I want Michael Thomas. I'm 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 all in. I want I want Jared Cook. Um, 
it's just a matter of when they get in the red zone, do they happen to throw the touchdowns in or run the touchdowns in because you know the yardage will be there. You know the quality play will be there. 22 more touchdowns than Aaron Rodgers over their last 25 games combined. Oof. Really? Yeah. Last 25 oh games, Drew Brees, 64 touchdowns, Aaron Rodgers, 42 touchdowns. Oof. It's crazy. Yep. Deshaun Watson comes in at number seven. That The Packers don't love that. Oh, I see what you did, my man. I it's like a, it's it. A, it's a Jordan, Jordan Love it's joke. It's a Jordan Love joke. Which <laughs> You use his last name in a sentence. Mm -hmm. For the Packers who drafted him after trading up to get him. Oh, man, tell me more about this joke, Jason. <laughs> well, number seven on our top uh, ten list, Jordan Love. Jordan Love comes in at number seven. No, Deshaun Watson. Mike, you got him up at five. A lot of confidence there. If you ask me uh, for a few more players that I am rising on in fantasy drafts, Will Fuller's actually on that list. And Will Fuller, he says he is healthy. It's all we have to go off of right now. But we know that a healthy Will Fuller with Deshaun Watson historically, like last year was a little bit rough, but historically has been I love, fantasy fire. I love hearing Will Fuller say, if I stay healthy, the sky's the limit. Well, like he knows the truth. I like that, that, he's, that he yes. can look in the mirror and, and he say, knows that's the problem. I get hurt all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Step one is admitting that you have a problem. Sure. Yeah. And he's done it. So that that now he can actually work on this because, you know, Andy, you, we played a game uh in the in the studio you yes. had us play a game Will Fuller or Odell Beckham and the numbers were shocking. Will yes, Fuller is great if he stays on the field, which is great for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, it, it, they, they were shocking. Uh Will Fuller more top 10 weeks than Odell Beckham over the last 3 years. Yeah, that's so, wild. Uh but Deshaun Watson, he loses DeAndre Hopkins. When you combine that with the fact that uh you know, your your big addition is Brandon Cooks, David Johnson in the backfield. Randall Cobb. Very difficult schedule. We've walked through Houston's first seven games. It's a, it's a tough schedule, especially at the very top of the year. You don't have the rapport with these guys the way you did with DeAndre Hopkins for those big games. I do wonder if Watson's just kind of off the board in terms of, you know, if you draft him, let's put it this way. If you draft him, you have to pay a price that says you're starting him every single week. The season starts very difficult uh, for Houston, and you don't know who he's going to have their rapport with. There seems to be more risk with Watson. He's in the sixth round, same as Dak, same as Kyler. I mean, behind him, but in that range. And in that range, I just don't see the same upside or consistency, even though I do like Deshaun Watson. And I'm not worried too much about the schedule because my belief is this. When, when they are playing a good team and they are losing, they ha will have no – chance other than put the ball in Deshaun Watson's hands and have him make magic and I think he will make magic so I don't you know it's one of those things where when the team needs Watson I think he'll come through I, I'm a big believer in the talent but when you lose Hopkins you have an injury plagued I mean look look at his you, you can argue that his three main wide receivers depending on where you put Randall Cobb uh, you know c could be Will Fuller Brandon Cooks and, and Kenny Stills mm -hmm. those are three of the more injury prone guys, you know, out there. So it, it's tough to trust. You had, I mean, you had some problems last year and you couldn't always predict it with Deshaun Watson. He threw zero touchdowns against Jacksonville in week two, which came out of nowhere. Yeah, it was weird. Zero against Carolina in week four. See uh, what I mean? It's the bad teams that he's not as good. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, Jason. Baltimore, he threw zero and he finished 28th at the quarterback position in Baltimore in week 11 as well. So he had, I mean, he had, Zero touchdowns against Tampa in week 16. There were four games last year where he threw zero touchdowns and another uh, three where he only threw one. So there were disappearing acts from Deshaun Watson last year. Yeah. And um, that was with Hopkins. And it was with Hopkins, and they were difficult to predict. And he's a great player, but he also tries to do too much sometimes. He reminds me a lot of Russell Wilson. At the end of the year, he's going to be great. It's yes. just going to be kind of up and down. Some good games, some bad games, and when you put the ball in his hands, he's going to make magic happen. Um, but it's it's going to be a roller coaster ride. I don't want. I mean, look at the beginning of last you've, year. You've he said was, he's going to make magic a lot. Do you know something? I, is he a warlock? He is one of the. Oh man, Deshaun Warlock. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Deshaun you backed Warlock. Into that one. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. 
I got to be more careful. He, you know Ooh. why? I, why I keep saying he's going to make magic is because I don't know that I could name five players in the NFL I enjoy watching more than Deshaun Watson. He is he's so fun, and there it's always on these crazy broken plays. You think he's sacked, and he gets free and makes a scramble and bomb. It could throw. be a, there could be major problems for Deshaun Warlock. Because it could. Will Fuller gets hurt. Sometimes a spell backfires. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying, like, if you take this team and you subtract Will Fuller tomorrow, you're going to have problems. If you take this team and you subtract Brandon Cooks, you're going to have problems. Brooks brought this up. We didn't see Juju without Antonio Brown, and we haven't seen Will Fuller without DeAndre Hopkins on the other side either. So as much upside or potential as that player has, I'm just saying you remove a piece or two, you combine the schedule, Watson's always kicking against the goads a little bit with Bill O'Brien. You you just have more downside to me, more yep. risk. And with where you have to draft him, zero teams. He'll be on zero of mine. Carson wins at eight. Josh Allen at number nine. I'll highlight this about Carson Wentz. Statistically, he had a great season last year in terms of like, it's shocking to me. Like it surprises me with the weapons that he had, what he was able to do. Because you go back to that MVP type of year that he was having uh, in 2017, and you come back, and like last year, he was over 4,000 yards. He was 27 passing touchdowns. He had nobody to throw to all year long. He may not have anybody to throw to this year. But he had an, a more impressive year than I think people give him credit for. Yeah, yeah for, How dare you? Greg Ward. Could be a starter. Greg Ward's going to start for this team. From week five Point on. proven. <laughs> from week five on. Uh, you know, that was when a lot of the injuries hit and he had a hodgepodge. He still finished okay when it comes to the totality of those games, very similar to what Drew Brees did a couple years ago. But on a weekly basis, he wasn't a top 12 guy. He was 18, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's in the teens, so he's not helping you on a weekly basis. But I here's what I believe about Carson Wentz. I think he's a great quarterback. I I, I would put him up near the top. Really? Certain, I, would, I think he's hmm. a lock in my top 10 as far as real-life quarterbacks. The last few years, either he has been injured or his wide receiving core has been injured. In 2017, there were no injuries to the wide receiver core, and, and, he, and his injury was you know super late. Um, but in 13 games, he was the quarterback six. If he has health, he's got Zach Ertz, he's got Goddard. They drafted Jalen Rager, who I believe in. Deshaun Watt, uh, Jackson is healthy. We don't know Alshon, but there's enough weapons there. And I... I believe in Doug Peterson, and I so I'm I'm in on Carson Wentz this year. In the ninth round, he's probably a quarterback I walk away with more than most. So you then to ask the question another way, you believe he has the upside to be a top five guy this year? Hundred percent. Interesting. I know with Mike, Miles Sanders Mike, you, you don't see field. that, do you? Yeah, I'm just I'm I don't know how to feel about Carson Wentz, and that ambiguity always. I just don't draft him. Like, it's one of those things where maybe I'm very wrong. Maybe I'm very wrong about Carson Wentz, and he is as good as you believe he is, Jason. But he's just for me is it doesn't inspire confidence. It doesn't inspire excitement. So I don't draft him for so fantasy. He, final point here: the one issue now, obviously, two two years ago he was incredible. He was a difference maker each and every week. If you look at last year, you know you start twelve quarterbacks. We say this. This is why mm -hmm. late round quarterbacks are the prescription. Last year, you know, your league starts 12. He really wasn't a difference maker except for two of those 16 weeks. Right. Otherwise, he's in the bottom half of what your league potentially got on a week-to-week -week basis. I and think if you're I, – I, so I, I know what you're saying. You're saying top six. But in reality, I, I think if your quarterback it finishes that week as a top 12, you, it, you're, you're good, especially if you're drafting this guy late. Yep. And, you know – Five of the first six weeks, he was in the top 12. Well, let's put that to the test because he's being drafted uh, in the same range as these last two players on our top 10 quarterback list. Josh Allen comes in at number nine. Mm, Josh Allen, <laughs> excellent. Matthew Stafford at number 10 on our consensus ranks, which is a, you know, you can get him around later. So putting Matthew Stafford on the board around later or Carson Wentz. I would take Carson Wentz. I would take Stafford. As would I. I actually have Matthew Stafford ranked ahead of Carson Wentz this year. Uh, I think I think that those are obviously the kind of quarterbacks we're probably going to end up with in a lot of our drafts, unless you're going to go really, really late, unless you're getting a Cam Newton 
Um, we've talked about wins. Let's talk about Allen and Stafford to finish out the episode. Uh, Josh Allen last year had 3,000 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, did his damage on the ground, nine rushing touchdowns. That's so wild. 500-plus rushing yards. Uh, I was, you know, I think Stephon Diggs can make a big impact for Josh Allen's progression as a passer. Uh, it's never been about his uh, efficiency in the passing game. That's good because <laughs> it's not there. Because it doesn't exist. But I do think Josh Allen's a good quarterback. I think he uh, continues to move forward, whether that translates to fantasy value or not. I'm concerned that it doesn't have to. His his success in the NFL does not have to. Much like Russell Wilson with the early rushing kind of oriented, defensive-minded Seattle Seahawks, Josh Allen can have a fabulous NFL season without giving you what you want for your fantasy team. Well, last year, Josh Allen, games that Josh Allen scored more than two total touchdowns, one. One. And that was the week. You're talking he, passing, rushing combined? Yes. Wow. That And that was the week he was the quarterback one on, on that particular week. But other than that, if you look at his game log, he was very meh. Nah. And what? here's my concern honestly, for, for Josh Allen. Uh, it's funny because people look at this argument uh, a different way than I do. They The argument ag of against Zach Moss, their third-round rookie running back, saying, well, Josh Allen's going to take – his touchdowns. Frank Gore had 11 carries inside the five that turned into two touchdowns. Josh Allen had five carries inside the five that turned into five touchdowns. If Frank Gore were, were able to execute better inside the five, what happens to Josh Allen's touchdowns? That's the way I am looking they at it. They go that. down. They, <laughs> thank you, Jason. Thank you for <laughs> answering my rhetorical question. Got it. Uh, so that, that's my concern for Josh Allen. What if Allen finishes the year with four rushing touchdowns? Because the passing touchdowns are not – they're not jumping to a level. Well, uh, they could, though, couldn't they? Not to me. I mean, Lamar. Not this is the Lamar, Lamar Jackson question of, of last offseason. Every single offseason discussion was Lamar Jackson has no chance to become this passing – He's inaccurate. Yeah, I mean, and then he, all of a sudden the jump happened. That's mm. And you add Stephon Diggs to the equation, a great team. I'm just asking the question, could Josh Allen – be one of the players that make that massive leap. He's going to have to jump up to the 66 completion percentage range like Lamar Jackson did. Yeah, can he? Yes, I. he, he absolutely no. can. Diggs he, will move that number further. Diggs will move it up, uh, and, and not just Diggs. I mean, the, the reality is what Diggs does is he makes John Brown and Cole Beasley better at the role that they are now playing for the team. So I think he's Possible, got a good yeah. wide receiving core. I think he can make that jump. I do not believe he will make that jump to be good enough in the passing game because I think he I think he loses rushing work. I think they want him to try to get better at passing. So you look at both Kyler Murray and and Josh Allen. I think both of them are going to rely a little less on their rushing and a little more on their passing game. Both added a, an elite wide receiver, but I think Kyler is Lamar's set up to, like why not just do both? Right, but that well that's my <laughs> point is that I believe Kyler came in with the passing pedigree, the passing accuracy, the passing ability to take a leap forward, whereas the probability of Josh Allen doing that is not the same. So I'm, I'm, you know, he's, he's still good. He's still got a rushing baseline, um, but he's more like my quarterback 10. If I had, uh, because that's where you have him ranked. Exactly. So it's more like more where like he, he is. 10. Uh, I cannot imagine having Josh Allen and not utilizing what he's brought you on the ground. I mean, it's just like the Cam Newton equation. You, Josh Allen is going to run because Josh Allen is going to get outside the pocket and have the ability to run the football. Um, I think he ha he has a beautiful opening schedule. He plays the Jets, the Dolphins, the Rams, the the Raiders. Yeah, that's to start pretty the year. Solid. I yeah. think he has a, a, a he's a great late round target to me. Yeah, to, to start to sure. start the season and just see if you do get the magic with Stephon Diggs because sure. the pathway is there. Yeah, I I I mean the reality is. I, Josh Allen is a is a great runner. He has a bad schedule this year. Gets off to a hot start, but the the thing I can't wrap my head around is how he is so good rushing the ball in the NFL and so bad at running as a human. You guys remember his forty? 
where he he ran like Dwight Schrute's brother and he doesn't know how to use his arms. If you haven't seen it, Foot Clan, you must yeah, look okay. up Josh uh, Allen's 40 run. It's hysterical. I've never seen a guy run like this that's not on a comedy show. I feel like he was mailing it in. Like he's just like, I don't care about this. I mean, no, he, I'm, I'm remembering it now. <laughs> how Jason, is he? It's very funny. It is great. I, f- I forgot about it. <laughs> and then Matthew Stafford last year was unbelievable through the first nine weeks of the season. Yeah. I was impressed with Matt Patricia's willingness to change kind of the identity that he came into the league possessing and, and just handing the ball off to Stafford and letting him do his thing. It, it made them competitive um, against better teams. Well, it's, it's, the, I mean, it, it can work hand in hand because it's the, if you want to be, Oh, we're the tough running team, draw everybody up with the run and then throw deep, which is what Stafford would did last year. I mean, he was airing it out more than any quarterback in the league. Yeah, and they gave him the ability to throw on first down frequently, which was is you know you talk to Warren Sharp, it's like that's Warren Sharp's dream is these NFL teams start to take the step forward like Andy Reid does in, in Kansas City and throw the ball on a yeah. running down, yeah. Yeah. and they let Matthew Stafford do that often. Hey, you're you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do it's that. It's a running down. Yeah, well, welcome to you had two tight ends <laughs> on the field. You're supposed to run the ball. <laughs> I don't know why it's that voice. <laughs> Hey, hey, <laughs> listen, <clears throat> that's my poison. <laughs> Matthew, he, he, here's, poison. The, here's the offense that Matt Patricia ran last year. He pulled the book out. You know, it's a real thick book. It's got mm-hmm. all the plays in it. But the, the cover page, the title sheet, mm-hmm. it says, don't get fired. Mm-hmm. And it's really, that's step one. And it doesn't matter what you do. I don't care if your identity is to run the football and play defense. Here's a little tip. Uh, you couldn't run and you couldn't play defense. So if you're going to win, you're going to give Matthew Stafford the opportunity to throw to Kenny G and Marvin Jones, and now you've got a arguably the best pass-catching running back coming out of college in DeAndre Swift. We talk about, okay, maybe they can't run the football since Barry Sanders. That doesn't mean DeAndre Swift can't be a weapon in this offense catching the ball 50 times the way Theo, Theo Riddick was the most relevant running back out of the backfield in, in Detroit yeah. in the last 20 years because he caught the football. So I, I do like Stafford because of his draft capital. He's the quarterback 13 off the board. Yep. You can take him with your uh, We all we all like close Stafford, to the yeah. last pick. He's on our breakout or our value list. I do have the worry with Stafford. My only worry cuz he was unfathomably good w- the beginning of last year. It was great. I don't worry about him. I do worry about Patricia and and, and the OC in the sense that we we were coming in last year saying they want to run the ball. That's the history. That's what they say. That's what they've done. And it they didn't. And g- great. We had a small sample size half of the year where Stafford was airing it out. But I don't think that that is a flat guarantee because we saw in a short stretch that, you know, I, th- I think if they could run the ball and play defense, that's that's what they want to try to do. So, I, you know, I worry about the coaching uh, limiting uh, Stafford, but we did but we did not see him limited last year. Oh, he so was it's a unlimited. Tale of, he was actually unlimited. His pace? 5,000 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, just for people who want to understand. It wasn't, you know, three weeks. It was eight, half years. It was half eight year. games yeah. played. So a um, lot of upside. We all see it here at the Fantasy Footballers. All right, that is it. With That is it for today. Not forever. We'll be back again. We at, will be back tomorrow with more quarterback talk. And, and honestly, the more exciting. The, the more exciting quarterbacks. Because oh, yeah. these are the guys that you get to take the shot at. Like, this is where Lamar Jackson was last year. I'm just thinking about Josh Allen. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.